Hi, I'm currently running this preview version of the panel that's been completely rewritten right here. And you can see that I was developing this because just look at the amount of clocks that I've added to the panel as a test. And the cool thing is that after so much work, it kind of works, kinda, but it's already a lot, much better than before. So first of all, let me show you the most unexciting thing ever, which is the plasma panel actually working. You can see that I'm able to drag things inside of the panel and it will show me where they're going to be put. And if I drop it, it will be actually added to the panel. And then I can go here and enter edit mode and take these widgets and then drag them around and when I'm done, I can take a clock and remove it. And this is crazy, all of this works. And you could say, okay, uh, it also works on my machine, what's the difference? Well, the difference is that if you haven't been paying attention to my videos, I've completely rewritten all of the code and nothing was working, nothing. So it's actually pretty amazing that everything works. What was I doing wrong? Uh, since I ended the last video, well, everything almost. No, the idea was good. The idea of, um, sorry about that. The idea of having this, um, where is that? Main.qml element, uh, the repeater with the model and the delegate, which we talked about last time. Go see, um, I broke uh, the panel video if you haven't seen it yet. But now that we do have this repeater, which uses our model and the correct delegate. What was missing is that, do you remember in last video, I talked about um, this on applet change function. I said, okay, this function should be called whenever uh, the applet changes. So also when you actually make uh, instantiate, instantiate this container element. That was wrong. When you create a new applet, uh, actually a new container for the applet, and then you set the new applet value, you're not actually changing any value. You're just adding a context property. So to actually reflect, reflect the change in the applet, I'm not anymore passing a applet um, variable yeah, up here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Come on. I will find this, okay. In here, the new element is not longer applet is applet, but context applet. And then there is this function, which is component uncompleted. And this is when you're done and you're completed the component, then you instantiate the applet to be inside of the container and you set the applet uh, property of the container to be this new context applet. And this made uh, half of the things work right away, which is very nice. Uh, it also means that half of the things were not working. What's the idea of behind of all of this messy stuff? So the idea is, this is the container. The container, whoops. The container, I'm doing a clone of this element each time I add something to the panel, okay? And I do that here, new element, and then I insert this new element inside the applets model. And when I insert something inside the applets model, it creates a new container element. And whenever that happens, now we call this uncompleted um, function, which is when your clone actually is completed. And then it says, okay, you remember that context applet that I gave you up earlier, which is the actual applet inside the container. Now, the parent of that applet is the container. It should be as big as the container. Anchors field means as big as. My applet is the context applet. And then a lot of debugging stuff, which can actually be thrown away because everything works now. What could am I actually throwing away thanks to these changes? Uh, well, look at here. So see this function remove applet well, it's useless, it's gone. Insert before, no longer needed. Insert after, not there anymore. Sorry about that, I forgot this closing thingy. 
insert at index not needed anymore whoops too much okay move uh, well this one uh, is actually from me and we'll see later why I need it index at coordinators uh, I'm going to actually delete this whole part of this function um, but I haven't done that yet I'm working on it and that's the next step but it will be thrown away update margins is needed but pretty much 90% okay not 75% uh, of this file was just removed and why did I do that well first of all that code was very ugly I didn't like show it to you fully but that was ugly and now if I want to add something to the panel I can just say as I do here insert in the model of the applets at the right position the new element sometimes the right position is in this case as an example what I'm missing here the DND spacer sorry is the element which actually shows up in the panel to show you where the, applets, uh, the applet is going to fall when you drag something over the panel and well basically it's saying okay take the index which is i of the spacer and that's where you're going to put the element and then remove the element and the index of the spacer which is the spacer so add something in the index of the spacer and then take off the spacer or in here insert the new element at the index at these coordinates so it actually reads up uh, what's in the coordinates that i gave you and throws the stuff there and that's very nice and everything but i still needed a move function somewhere here layout manager move what's the what's the reason behind this okay so this is inside on drag move so that is when i'm actually dragging something over the panel so when I'm dragging something over the panel, we move the spacer, which is again, the empty space to show you where the place is going to fall. We move that to the element at the coordinates of the mouse. So that's rather simple. We move the empty spacer underneath the mouse. Why did I have to do a different implementation of this inside of the layout man? It's not a different one, but it's an helper function inside of the layout manager. The idea is we need to do this bit of code and we are going to often need to move things around. So it's actually better to do a function. And the idea is that if the index we're moving from is smaller to the index we're moving to, then we need to take one off from the target index otherwise it's fine as is in here we're doing uh, the actual move function in the model which actually moves the applets this is just a move helper function that takes this minus one off when the from index is smaller to uh, compared to the to index why is that because if the from index is smaller than this one it means that the element we're trying to move from is to the left of this one which means that this one is uh, counting in the you know indexes of the target and we don't want that to happen ideally we should like think of we are removing this element from the list and then we're adding it back and if we remove it it means that if it's on the left of this element this element would uh, shift left from one of one spot so we're adding the minus one this makes things work and i'm explaining to you like easily but it took uh, it took hours <laughs> and then there is finally the config overlay where all of the rest of the magic happens as an example when you're dragging widgets around this uh, there is this very ugly thingy which is very ugly and i need to fix this which is this thingy so what we're we doing here this is when you start dragging an element when you press on the mouse over an element to, to drag it around so we insert inside the model the placeholder which is empty space the same size of your applet okay then current applet equals applet container 
component create object root applet item applet. What's that? Okay, okay, let's calm down. The idea is we are, uh, when we start dragging an applet around, we actually need to remove it from the panel. And to do that, we need to destroy the container it was in. We cannot take off the container from the panel as it was. We need to destroy the old one. And that means we need to create a new one, which is this one. So we create a new container, applet container component. And to create this new one, we are giving root as the parent element. So we are creating it inside of the root element. That's fine. And then we're telling him that the applet is the item applet. And please note that in here, in here sorry, I'm not actually uh, saying context applet, but just applet. And that's because um, I forgot, but uh, it didn't work. Context applet didn't work. And because of that, we also need to do the same things that we did with the context applet now, which means that we have to set the parent to be this element. It needs to be as big as this element. And then we also need this new container component that we created to be the same exact size and uh, location as the old one. The old one is called item. So we say, so we say the X of this equals the X of this, the Y of this equals the Y of this and so on, which is ugly. And, uh, but that's about it. Then we just remove the old one and that's it. It works, it's not pretty by any mean, and I should do a prettier way of actually doing a copy of a container component. But once that is done, it's done. As I said, the only thing missing, and this is actually interesting, so let me show you, is this whole part. Okay, so what's happening? So if we ignore all of this, let's let's pretend it doesn't exist. What we're saying is, okay, what is the index of the element at these coordinates? Okay, so, okay, the interest part is this. Child equals layout child at x, y. So basically we're saying, okay, take the child at this element, uh, sorry, at these coordinates. And then if we are on the left side of this this whole parenthesis says, if we are on the left side of the child, we return its index. If we are on the right side, we return the index of the element plus one because we're on the right. Sounds very easy. And this part only says, okay, if we are on, are on a horizontal panel, then just take it at the middle of the panel instead of up, down, just for sure. It's probably not needed, but, then if it, it it sounds simple because we're just saying take the element at these coordinates and return its index. That's it. Except it isn't because of all of this. What's all of this which I want to take off? Well, if you look here, well, you have a clock here. You also have a clock here. We have two. Between the two, there's some margin. As you can see here, context menu, uh, um, sorry, a uh, tooltip over the clock. Here, another tooltip. At the very middle, there is no tooltip. And, okay, I can, sorry. Okay, very middle, no tooltip, because there's some margin between one applet and another. And if, for any reason, we were trying to get the index of the element at these coordinates, we're exactly between two applets, we're inside the margin, and inside of the margin, no element exists. So what we're saying is, if no element exists, then, well, there is a return zero, which I added, but of course, if we ignore that, then we need to iterate over each element and check whether if we make it a bit bigger, then it actually fits also the mouse position. Basically, we're removing the margins and checking which element the, our mouse is actually in. Sad but uh, necessary. Does it work? Yes, uh, kind of, because there were bugs related to this. Is this ugly? Yes, also. Uh, will it die soon? Yes, 
because I will find a solution. Like as an example, I could make a transparent element that's actually bigger than the applet. Just this is the applet. Can you actually see this? Like this, this is the applet. And then I make an element which is bigger. So if you get inside of the margin, True, it might be outside of the applet, but it's still inside of the transparent element. Maybe that works, maybe not. Uh, I will find a better solution than this. Worst case scenario, scenario, I actually make the applets bigger and then in add back the margin inside of the applets. That's very ugly, but that can be done if necessary. What's for sure is that this code will die. Actually, let me just take it off now. In no way am I interested in actually having this in my code. Now this is my code, so take it off. <clears throat> this update margins function looks very complex and ugly. And uh, it's because I wrote it months ago. It's kind of necessary for now. Hopefully I will refactor it later. And let me actually show you this ugliness. Or is it this ugliness? This is so ugly. And it's me, like I wrote this months ago. It's so ugly, I, I can't believe I wrote this with a sane mind and I blame the, the reviewers for making this. Yeah. It's a mess of code with which nobody can, under, not even me, you know, nobody can understand this. I did put like four lines, five lines of comments, one, two, three, four, five. Thank you, Nicolo, but uh, it's still a complete mess. Maybe it's the only solution, hopefully not. Next steps, so as I've told you, fix that thingy of the coordinates getting between the applets and um, this thing that I said before that, which I uh, just forgot about, what was that? Com ah, yes, this very ugly part, it needs to be rewritten. And then I can actually get back at uh, predefining the animation code, which if you remember, I gave up on last video because it was ugly, but that's it for now. Let's show the ending. Yep, that's me, that's my face. This is the peluche I gifted my girlfriend. I'm currently recording there. Still on my voyage, uh, my travel, on my thingy to try to fix the plasma panels as much as possible. I'm receiving lots of nice comments as always, so I'm super happy. And if you want to join this community of people giving me money, <laughs> if you want to join this community, let's uh, take the money part off. Um, you can feel free to use one of the links to my left your your left it's your left it's my right yes and that's it see you next time i hope that you like this thingy of rewriting the whole panel because i'm putting quite a lot of effort inside of it regardless of the donation like that's nice but i'm actually doing this because i enjoy writing panels code honestly i do bye